this is just going to be a bit of a small video about little updates and things like this. But first of all, I want to say many thanks to Jeff and from the UK who sent me a pair of Land Rovers. Well, and you know something, I was really cute, but what you perhaps can't see is he's made some little decals to go on the doors with my logo on. That's really nice. And this one's got Yorkshire Rider on. Isn't that good? Thank you for that, Jeff. That cheered me up. So what's the... Well, I wasn't depressed, but I've been a kind of a stressful week, I must admit. What's the purpose of this video today? My old favourite, Crown Rust Proofing. It's a year ago that I did the experiment on my um, scrap tin, my scrap container over there. And we're going to have a look at it, but first of all, let's step back in time like Kylie. Here we go. I'm going to, I've ground off a little piece of my uh, barrel here. I'm going to drop the camera down in a minute and I've put the date on here. And this is pretty rusty uh, here, so I've ground off the rust to bare metal and we're going to give it a spray. But first of all, I thought I should shout out what, what it says here. All right, it says for cars, trucks, RVs, and campers, trailers, electrical connections, black boxes, right on time, uh, control panels, brake cables, switches and dials, slack adjusters, metal and moving parts, bikes, lawnmowers, door locks, hinges, part storage, and any, anything that metal can corrode. Yeah, and that's what it says, anything that metal can corrode. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So it, it says here, Canada's number one rust control company. Get it? You never see a rusty moose, do you? Uh, protects your vehicle, household equipment and much more from damaging effects of corrosion. Crown displaces moisture and creeps into hard to reach areas providing superior rust protection and lubrication. And it does creep because it's thin. Listen, it's almost like WD-40 but better. So let's give it a spray. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this and see what happens to it over a period of time. That would be fun, wouldn't it? I, wouldn't, I won't leave the video running for about a year, but anyway. So it, was, it says, oh, you've got to pull, pull off the safety catch. It's like, a, it's like a gun. And it says, eight to ten inches away. There you go. I think that's adequate. We'll do some over the date as well, just so that doesn't rust off. And we'll come back to it. So here we are, one year on. Well, a bit over, it was on the 19th of August. But, how did it do for rust? Well, it's still shiny, but it has started just to get a little few spots on there. I don't know if they'll rub off. Nope. But it's got a few spots on, but it's still shiny metal. Now, remember, this is an annual rust proofing. All right, so you, I think, Inside a chassis or something, or an internal compartment, uh, like a bulkhead or something like this, would be great. But when it's exposed to weather and things like this, maybe a quick touch up every year, every every year. But I'm very impressed with it. Now, you can't quite pick up on here, but if you remember when I sprayed it, I just sprayed here. It actually spread all the way out here and right from top to bottom. It did a great job. So where's this leading us to? I'll tell you. As many of you know, I was sent a Hydrotherm uh, Vapor Max uh, Vapor Blaster. And many thanks to Max for sending that. I am putting a video together of that, but I'm sort of getting used to the machine and what it can do. Uh, so I don't want to sort of go through things gung-ho and tell you all the wrong information. Uh, it was in kit form. Uh, I had a few little issues with putting it together. Not, not technical more working on your own type problems if you see what I mean. I'll explain it more in the video but I think we can overcome that. But I have got it working and the results are really good. I mean um, as a test piece this is a Weber carburetor that was absolutely white with corrosion. Five minutes and it's a nice usable piece again. No problems at all. But again, it took, me, it took me a couple of days to set the machine up so I could actually get the results that I wanted. That was a problem because I was sort of on my own a little bit. But anyway, that's not the, that's not the reason for this video, really. It's to show you that when things come out of the vapour blaster, they can corrode quickly if you don't blow them off and dry them and warm them up quickly. 
to get any moisture out because any steel parts now which weren't plated will be subject to corrosion. Now you can see these pieces here this was originally plated but a bit of it started to wear off and you'll see some corrosion round here on bolts and these bolts here. So I was thinking what about when it comes out the vapour blaster to protect it with some crown rust proofing. Now people are saying uh, you could put some clear coat on there. Maybe, maybe not. But if, if it protects the metal, you know, the exposed metal to any corrosion, surely this is the easiest way because you can get this off. But it does make a film, as we saw on the, on the container, it makes a, a, a nice film. So that would really protect it. So what we're going to do, <laughs> another experiment coming up, I'm going to sandblast, oh, sandblast, I'm going to vapour blast some articles, like halfway if you see what I mean, and then I'm going to crown rust proof one side and leave the other one exposed to the elements. I'll fasten it up somewhere outside, I'll think of something, and see what happens to it. But I was really impressed by the, the results of the, the blaster. This was my uh, last piece that I did yesterday, and I sort of worked out a little technique, because this was really, I mean really, really corroded. Uh, so I'll put it through the sandblaster first, a very fine sandblaster, and then I vapour blast it, and the, the results were really, really nice. Now, be warned, um, I wouldn't recommend that doing, putting, put the carburetor through a sandblaster. Um, there's, there's certain techniques, and that's what they've been doing, been really busy this week, just practising, practising, seeing what we could get away with. Um, I blasted the outside of this carburetor, because I wanted to see what it would do. But sometimes it's easier to clean the outside, if you see what I mean. So when you do strip it down, it's going to be really clean to uh, do it again from the inside. So you can get to all the screw heads and stuff like this. That's what I'm trying to say. But will crown rust proofing work? I don't know. Let's see. So here we have a cover off a Borg Warner transfer case. Been outside for years. It was absolutely knackered. I ended up cutting the bearing out. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered hammering it. Um, as you can see, it's very badly corroded. Now, what I intend to do with this is a little experiment to see how we see what finish we get. And because I don't really need this, I'm going to hang it outside in the elements for another year to see what happens to it. But this time, covering it with crown rust proofing. So, say for example from this cut line here, I'll do this half, sandblast it and vapour blast it, and then the other half I'll just purely vapour blast it and see what, the, see what the finish is. And perhaps you'll understand why I say that sandblasting is, gives a nicer finish. Now these are, are these die cast or sand cast? This is, this looks like it's been, yeah this looks like it's been die cast so the finish might not be as good as this, which was sand cast, there is a difference. It seems to be, uh, you get a better finish on sand cast items, you know, shinier. Anyway, let's give it a go and see what it comes out like. So as you can see, there is a distinct difference between a sandblasted side and vapour horned and just the old corrosion and vapour horned. This was a really bad piece of uh, metal, as you saw, and you can see here how pockmarked it is. Now, I don't know, I don't know, I'm still beginning, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But I don't know if there's different grades of glass bead, I don't know what grade glass bead I was sent, but it certainly does a job if it's been sandblasted. But prior, I just had a thought there, just prior to putting this outside, I shall sandblast this section here and don't vapour blast it. Alright, so I'll just sandblast this again, just this little bit here, and then we'll crown rust proof it and see what happens. As usual with my experiments, I changed my mind again. I thought I'd do something as a control as well. So what we've got here, this section here, is sandblasted and, vapor, sandblasted and then vapour blasted. This section here, 
it's vapor blasted just on straight aluminium, as it just as it was. At the bottom, I've sandblasted both sides. All right. I'm going to crown rust proof everything except this section here, and that would be our control. That will tell us what the weather's going to be doing to it. And I thought once it's been rust proofed and it's, the rust proofing's flashed off and dried, I think I'll put a bit of salt on it just to really kickstart it <laughs> a little bit better. So let's just spray. Which bit did I say was going to be my control? <laughs> right, so that was going to be my control piece there, wasn't it? Wait a minute, you can't see, can you? I want you to see because uh, this could be history in the making. So this is my control and all the rest gets a crown rust proof in. All right, there is a little bit of overspray and that's all it's going to get. Right, so this is the control that's not being touched. Let me hang this outside to dry and see what happens. So what it. about steel, Mike? Well, here's a classic example. This is an output flange of an LT230. Ideally, we've got four sections here, so we could do the same experiment again. We'll, um, we'll sandblast three quarters of it, vapor blast one, and then sandblast again one piece, just like we did the aluminium piece. You'll understand. So what I've done is I've sandblasted three quarters of it and it's come up really nice. You know, usually I just put a bit of paint on those. And it only took about two minutes. It's literally less than that. Uh, I use sand over and over again recycling and it gets a nice fine powder. That's beside the point. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave this piece here and I'm going to vapor horn these bits, if you see what I mean. And we're going to have a look and see what it comes out like. So this is what I did. This has all been sandblasted, except for this bit. With this piece, it was pure vapour horn on top of rust, and I must admit it came out really, really well. This bit has been sandblasted and then vapour horned, and it came up even better. This bit's our control, so this bit has just been sandblasted and left to the elements, uh, and so that should work. I marked it out because obviously I don't know which way it goes. So what we'll do, again, we'll get our... Uh, Crown rust proofing. And we'll do three quarters of it and leave this bit as our control. And then we'll come back and see what this looks like. I've got a bit of crown rust proofing up there, but I'll try and wipe it off. All right, so I hope you like that. We'll, we'll follow this video up next year. Mm -hmm.